What is like your go-to investments that you usually like to go for? My, my primary is my life insurance policies. Mm -hmm. I shove a lot of cash inside my life insurance policies, life insurance, retirement plans. I bought four cars through my uh, life insurance retirement plan. I don't pay any interest to any bank out there. Mm -hmm. If, uh, uh, for example, you know, we just got a, a Rolls Royce delivered to, to, the, to the office. It's a $280,000 Rolls Royce. Right, I took a fifty thousand dollar down. Uh, I took a fifty thousand dollar cash and just wired just to get them delivered. But I took the cash from our policy, mm. paid the dealership with it, and now my two thousand three. What I would normally pay the bank, I'm just paying that back to my life insurance policy. So mm. I lost no interest. Better part of it, you know this about cars because I placed it in the uh, uh, area of my business and it was just shy of six thousand pounds. But if it, it wasn't even SUV anyway, mm -hmm. but I can write off the bonus. I can write off the depreciation section one seventy nine uh, yeah. amortized over the next five years, the cost of that car on my taxes. Mm. So I get the benefit of tax deducting my car, but also the benefit of not paying any interest to Capital One or Bank of America, yeah. or Fargo. I keep it inside. So interest that would normally have been lost. I recoup, it's been my bank. So that's my primary is that, and by the way, my insurance policy inside index universal life policies, we, we've we experienced double digit returns yeah. contrary to what everybody sells out, says out there in terms of permanent life policy. Everybody thinks a index universal life policy is the same thing as a whole life policy. And when people make comments like that, it tells me how uneducated they are about life insurance. It's like calling a Porsche a Ferrari. Yeah. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. So when people talk about whole life policies, uh, index universal life being permanent policies, Dave Ramsey gets on, on the air. I don't trust any index universal life policy. Well, this was a policy that was created after your era. Yeah. Right? This was created in 1997. The, the benefit we have today, I started selling in 2001. Mm. Uh, during the, the, the first recession I dealt with in my entire career, my own mother has index universal index universe life policy, index annuities. She hadn't lost a dime. We're about to go through our third recession, been through a pandemic, been through two recessions before, and hadn't lost a dime. And so many people are so uneducated or unaware or just don't want to learn about it. And But why? That's what financial literacy and financial education is all about. If one thing Patrick has talked to us in our communities is this, please keep hanging around us because we'll eventually help you start thinking for yourself. Mm. A buddy of time, I, I've been still trying to figure this out. So later we got to talk more about, but for the viewers to try to put it down in, because I know there's so much details, life yeah. insurance that can confuse people. And I feel like, I think you've probably figured out how to make it dumbified for people, but can you figure out how to dumbify in like five minutes or so where there's a thing that he told me, I don't know how this works, where he said, uh, apparently once the life insurance policy becomes big enough, yeah. you can sometimes get a loan and have it as collateral or something Correct. like that. And then yeah. you live off the debt secretly and then you don't yeah. pay as much taxes or whatever. So how does all that work? So when people think that you're, for example, if I'm borrowing from my 401k plan, right? I'm actually having to sell my position in the stock market of where my 401k was hmm. to finally get my money at the close of business that day so I can get my check two, three days later, okay? Loaning money and borrowing money from your own life insurance policy is not the same way. Number one, when you borrow money from the insurance policy, your money is not removed from the S&P 500. Hmm. So your position remains the same. Hmm. What they do though, they collateralize the money that you borrow. Let's say you borrowed $100,000 to buy real estate, to invest into another business, to buy a car, whatever. They, you actually generate a loan from the general account of the insurance company, which collateralizes your cash value inside the policy, which your death benefit pays upon your death, that loan bounce. In the meantime, you do not have to pay back that loan or you can choose to pay back that loan. It's completely up to you. Uh, number two, after some of these insurance companies um, uh, holding periods, there's no cost fees or there's no, there's no interest, excuse me, on the loan. So it's what they call a zero cost wash loan. So for example, certain insurance companies, National Life Group across the street, five, six, seven years into, into these policies, if you loan money from your policy, there's zero cost to loan out your own money. For example, if I borrow money from my equity in my property, if I cash out equity from my property, is there any taxes on that? No, because I'm cashing out equity from my property via a loan. Hmm. Same thing too with an insurance policy. You're cashing out the equity and policy via a loan. That's why there's no tax on it based on certain tax provisions called 70, section 7702. Um, uh, 72E talks about how much money in life insurance you actually need to have. Section 101A says if you take a death benefit or a living benefit from a life insurance policy, there's no taxes. So there's so many different hmm. tax codes that pertain to the tax treatment of life insurance that just a lot of people aren't aware of and they should dive into it and find out what those are. And 
Don't think that your accountant knows about it either. Don't think that your CPA <laughs> knows about it either. Doesn't know no. about it. And a lot of life insurance agents don't even know about it. Yeah. I started I started doing this stuff in 2004, 2005. So I've got 17 years of I, I saw infinite a, banking on strategies. your channel, your oldest video is like 2008. You do know, bro, I was eight years old then. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate it. I was eight that. years old, Thank right? You. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> so in other words, I still got to catch up to you. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> but no, that's crazy. Yeah. So is that just a monthly payment then? Like, how does that work for you to build that up? Yeah, it's both. You'd put a lump sum at the beginning, a monthly premium amount. Uh, there's a certain amount. There's a certain amount of money you can put inside a life insurance policy to not create what they call a modified endowment contract, which means it's going to be taxable down the road. Mm. So all you got to do then is just increase what you put in, in terms of your death benefit inside the policy, so you can pack more cash. Mm. Most people, when they buy life insurance, it's the least amount of money premium for the most amount of death benefit. When you're using a life insurance policy, it's a different style of policy. It's, instead of term, it's permanent, and with inside the permanent styles of policy, you use a index universal life, which is the most optimized for cash value accumulation. Mm -hmm. you know, and you can have upside potential that, and a lot of people rival that between whole life policies. They're, 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 you're pretty neck and neck. I mean, during down years, a whole life policy, universal life policies will win. But in terms of the ups, up years, whole life policies will lag behind greatly gotcha. to an index universal life policy. That's gotcha. true.